Hello, uh, my name is Jing Guo. I am a third-year PhD student in physics department at Florida International University. I am working in Dr. Jing He's lab. Our lab is focused on nanotechnology and single molecule cellular biophysics. My research is apply nanoprobe to detect biochemicals inside a single living cell by surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Uh, our lab is focused on multifunctional nanopipet for multi-mode cell imaging and sensing. Um, this nanopipet is based on traditional glass nanopipet, uh, which is widely employed in many techniques for single cell, for cell sensing. The pipette-based techniques including uh, scanning ion conductance microscopy and also called uh, SICM. It, from SICM, we can know the topography and extracellular potential imaging of the cell. Uh, the second technique is patch clamp. Patch clamp can tell us the intracellular potential and also it can detect single ion channel current. Uh, the last one is surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. It can detect the biochemical inside a cell. This also is what I focused on. Uh, later on, we will combine the SEARS and also the other techniques developed by our colleagues. Um, here is how our SEARS active glass pipette looks like. And uh, I will show why we choose the glass pipette as our nanoprobe. The first thing is it's very easy to fabricate. Later on, I will show you how to fabricate this uh, uh, glass pipette. This is optical image of the pipette. Um, this is a scale bar. So if we zoom in the very apex, the tip, we can see the tip is very is in the nanometer size. It's around a few hundred nanometer. So this few hundred nanometer will give us a very high spatial resolution. Um, another thing is, as I mentioned before, it can integrate many techniques on this uh, nanopipette. Uh, in my case, I will focus on the surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Um, for serious active nanoprobe, we needed to do more modification of this uh, glass pipette. Uh, we need to deposit the gold nanostructure on the outer surface of our, gold, of our glass pipette. It can be some gold nano uh, rod, or it can be some gold nano particles. Uh, this is SEM image of our uh, de gold deposited uh, glass pipette. As you can see, the, the surface is very rough. Those are the gold bright dots are the gold nano particles. After this, we fabricate our CS active substrate. So. After we make our glass nanopipette uh, CS active, if we want to detect specific analyte, we need to do further modification on our gold surface. Uh, this molecule we also call it a reporter molecule. So it can be specifically react with uh, the analyte you're interested. And then it will form another uh, chemical. So the Raman spectrum of these two chemicals give you different Raman spectrum. So from that, we can know the concentration of the analyte. Um, this is how the equipment uh, looks like. So we have uh, our CS active glass pipette here, and uh, it is controlled by a micro manipulator. Uh, this part I will also show you in the later video. So it can precise control the pipette go right, left, up, down. Um, and this is our cell. This, this cell is a living cell and it's cultured on the cover glass. During the imaging, it's doing in the solution. So the cell is still alive during the, during the experiment. And then we can insert our pipette into the cell. 
and uh, our laser spot this is the whole setup is on the microscope so we can focus the laser on the on the glass pipettes and uh, this if we zoom in, it's like this. Those red dots are our report, report molecule. So from the Raman chain, we can know the, the chemical inside the cell. Uh, now let me give you a um, roughly idea how Raman spectroscopy works. So if you shine a green light from a laser source, you might expect to see green light reflected from it, or nothing if it's a black material. But if you using a laser block filter beside the green light, actually they have the other color, the, the different color. So it has changed the frequency because during the scattering process, the energy change changed by the interaction with the laser with the with your sample. Uh, this process is called this uh, inelastic scattering process is called Raman scattering. This is uh, discovered by uh, India um, physicist um, who is Sir C. V. Raman, and he got a Nobel Prize uh, because of this discovery. And uh, from the energy difference, we can know the chemical of our sample. But this process is very low. That's why we didn't see the other color. We only can see uh, the same color as the incident light. This process is about one in 10 million. So it's a very low efficient uh, process. So that's why people discovered another called the surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. In this case, if people find if you absorbed your analyte on a metallic nanostructures, this process can be enhanced about 10 to the power 8, 10 to the 10 to the power 10. Um, so if you use cells, you can detect a single molecule. So as you can see, it's a uh, optical mass based method so it, it do not lead the level so you can directly shine the laser on the sample and the, do the detection um, and also the water have a very weak Raman signal that's why we can use for the biological uh, samples um, but for this one still have some challenges uh, for example the injection of the few hundred nanometer size a nano apex and also the laser expo exposure to the cell may cause the cell damage. Um, another thing is uh, surface enhanced Raman signal measured from intracellular structure are often very weak because of the very small sensing area and uh, also in the cell the, the, the chemical concentration is very low and uh, the different compartment have a very small difference. Uh, in CellMet, I'm working on optical sensing and the imaging part. So the eventually we want use our biosensor to monitor the behavior of the tissue. So for example, the AATP of the tissue and the calcium uh, put, um, proton, those chemical, cons the level of those uh, chemicals, uh, and also I will say this is how we working on a cell, so this is our pipette, this is a single cell, later on the, the, those may change to the tissues, so this is before and this is after we insert, and then we can shine a laser to this point and detect the chemical, biochemical inside here. Um, Later on, we will combine this technique with the other pipette-based technique like patch clamp and SICM. So the expectation is uh, we from those multi-parameter biosensor, we can characterize which state of the engineered um, cardiac tissue. Uh, this is our um, laser puller. So let's first turn on the power, and uh, this. 
set the parameter. So different parameter give you different uh, apex size and different uh, length of your uh, glass pipette. So it's a capillary, so inside is empty. So now we uh, install, fix the capillary inside the laser puller. So each capillary can give us two glass uh, nanopipette. Now use the screw to fix it, and uh, the laser is in the center. So because the laser can hit the glass pipette, and once you pull it, so it will deform and form that uh, nanopipette. So you need to make sure it's in place, then close the lid because there is a laser inside. So now the laser is on. Uh, which for around one minute you will hear a loud sound and that at that moment it means uh, it's ready and you see the, the light laser light is turned off now you can open the lid and now you get two glass nanopipette now you can see the tip is very sharp as we can see from before the slide showed before is around a few hundred nanometer size now within one to two minutes, we get two glass nanopipettes. And if you want to make it CS active, you need to deposit some gold nanostructure on the surface. Okay, once you made your pipettes, you can move to the equipment. So we need to install the uh, glass nanopipette on our micro manipulator so it can control the pipette approach to our sample. So here is the the state of the micro micro state, and on the carved glass there should we have a cell on it, and uh, this is can fine control the pipette. It have around a few hundred nanometer size uh, precise uh, resolution. So you can see from the optical image we also can see the pipette and now we use the micro manipulator to move the pipette but in this one there is no cell on the cover glass the pipette on the, uh, the there is a cell on the cover glass so now we are approaching to the cell and then we continue we can see it go inside of the cell and the cell have a little bit deformed uh, actually it is not a good thing to <laughs> see this deformation it may show some uh, damage to the cell because the cell size around 10 micron size our pipette the apex is around few hundred uh, but if you insert too much it may hurt the cell and if i retract our pipette we can see the cell go together with our uh, pipe it. it means the attachment of the cell to the cover glass not very good. Later on, we will do some modification and make the cell attached to the cover glass better.